Hey guys, you know that I promised you that from today's lesson, I'm going to start to teach you more about first move D4. You already have some videos on the channel about D4. It's about the Baltic defense, Austrian defense, a red defense, English red defense, and maybe a couple more, but we just have to be more systematic and we just have to, just like we created and gave you like alternative options for white with e4, I just have to do the same uh, for white with d4. And uh, in terms of that, I'd like to begin with the martial defense. Martial defense is a sub variation of the Queen's Gambit declined. It begins after d4, d5, c4, and knight to an f6. This is especially good video for uh, beginners and uh, lower rated guys such as medium level players who would like to get an easy advantage out of the opening. It's going to be a short video. You can absolutely use this for uh, tournament games such as Blitz games as well. But uh, what I'm about to show you is kind of refutation of this system. Uh, keep in mind, I didn't want to complicate with like tones of analysis and stuff. Uh, I just want to show you how Kasparov, who, whose games and style of play uh, I really enjoyed and liked so much, how did he treat these openings in the past? So let's go. After like knight f6, you just go with c takes d5. Uh, you know what is my approach? Whoever doesn't care about the center, you should take care of it and you should take c takes d5 after knight takes d5 because of course the queen takes d5 would be bad because you play knight c3 followed by e4 and what is just so much better for example like this look at this you got strong knight in the center you got a fantastic center afterwards you want to play knight f3 and he's got like lots of problems especially because the knight on f6 can always be kicked away with e5 afterwards when you complete your development of course in case they just go with queen a5 you have an easy option of playing bishop oops sorry bishop d2 and when you play bishop d2 you just want to go e4 rook c1 queen c2 jump maybe uh, somewhere off with this knight on c3 and get like much better game that's why they have to take by knight and everybody takes by knight but i i really want to insist on one thing many times in many uh, for example some games of my students were even very solid players like 16, 17, 18, 1900, I realized that when their opponents play knight f6, they tend to play knight f3 or knight c3. They absolutely uh, didn't recognize uh, like the momentum to take on d5 and to get the center. And I always tell them, hey guys, what are you doing? You gotta take on d5. If they don't care about the center, we should care. And that's why you have you know, three main moves in this system. He takes c4, queen's gambit accepted, e6, queen's gambit declined, and slav defense. If they take on c4, they have other ways of fighting against the center. If they play e6, when you play c takes d5, e takes d5, opens up both of these bishops but controls the center. If they play c6, the most popular and certainly one of the most difficult uh, defenses to crack slav, if you take on d5, they just have like pretty good control of the center. So that's why when they play knight f6, you immediately should take, aha, uh -huh, I remember, Maya did this uh, on the video, we should take this on d5, and when they play knight d5, there we go. Now we have a strong center, but once again, you got to be very accurate here. You're not supposed to play e4, because if you play e4, they go back with this knight, and now you can play knight c3 because of some gambit variation e5, or knight f3 because of bishop g4. I am not saying that e4 is not good. I'm not saying that these positions are not good, but it's not the most accurate. So here we're just going to follow Gary Kasparov's approach, who plays knight f3 and forever stops e5 by black, and on the other hand, uh, makes bishop g4 kind of useless. There are like a bunch of moves for black, and we're briefly just going to check all these lines. Uh, if they play bishop f5, uh, saying like, hey, man, you didn't play e4, so you won't be able to do it now. Previously, in all those articles about the martial defense, you could have seen that the guy suggested queen b3 because the bishop 
has left control of the b7 and going against this knight. That's a classic approach, but I would actually go with a very, very modern one. You play knight bd2. Knight bd2 maybe looks weird, maybe blocks the bishop on c1, but all these things are just temporarily. You want to go with e4 and react and break in the center afterwards. They can play knight b4 to give you a check, don't worry. You play e4 and all of a sudden you have domination in the center. When they move the knight or bishop on g6 or knight on b6, same type of position arises. You play e4. When they play bishop g4, you just play bishop e2. You have a strong control of the center. Queen b3, castles, play h3, uh, recapture by this flexible knight on d2 and f3 and get like full and great control of the center. They have lots of problems. If they play bishop g6, push the pawn up to h4, threaten this h5, harass the bishop on g6, and when they go with h6, play d5. You want to go knight e5, chasing away the light square bishop. You want to go queen b3. Afterwards, you want to chase this knight away on the rim of the board with a4 and a5. White looks fantastic. Like, it's lots of problems. They even have problems to do e6 here because you're going to take and create an isolated pawn. On the other hand, I've seen lots of guys against my students reacted with the bishop g4. It's kind of suspicious, uh, but because of a very a uh, special variation invented in a simul game by Gary Kasparov. He played knight e5. That's one of the reasons why you do not commit or why you shouldn't commit yourself with e4 early. So you play knight e5, chasing this bishop away, and playing queen to b3. When you play queen b3, you're eyeing b7 and d5. And everybody thinks, aha, uh -huh, that's it. We're going to play knight b6 because the bishop defends on f7 and everything's fine. No, guys, you just go with a beautiful move, queen h3. What a terrific move. What a fantastic idea. You now threaten this bishop. They got to move it. They only have one possibility. They have to move it here. You take on g6. They cannot capture by, uh, by pawn because you're just going to take the rook. They got to capture like this and with an isolated pawn. Uh, pawns like this. Uh, weakened uh, light squares like this. I don't even know discuss this position with you. Kasparov played this against uh, Fiala in Simul in Bratislava back to 2011 and easily won the game afterwards. Bishop here, mighty uh, pawn structure and the good uh, control of the light squares uh, gives white almost winning position. Many times I've seen that the guys say, okay, I don't want to have my knight being kicked with e4. Let me just play uh, knight f6. And when they play knight f6, I'm showing you a game of Kaspar against Camps in uh, Besancon 1999. Um, I, I want to insist on one thing here out of these games because Kaspar in all these games against weaker guys gave a beautiful approach how to take advantage of the center and how to hack. So this lesson you can use as a good theoretical lesson how to crack uh, and how to basically crush and slay this martial defense. But on the other hand, you just learn how to attack with a powerful center with d4 and e4. Many of you don't know how to do it. So look at this. e4 is controlling uh, the center. Both of these knights are developed in e6. Bishop d3, bishop e7, castles, and placing the rook on the semi-open file. When this guy played b6, most of you would play h3, a3, bishop f4, queen c2, or whatever. But look how Kasparov, in a nice fashion, organizing his pieces and preparing, building up attack on the king side. He's pushing e5. I insist on this move. In every single game that I chose for this lecture, I chose the game with e5. And this is going to be the highlight motive of this lecture, just to teach you how to attack. So e5, knight d5, you take on d5. All of a sudden, this pawn becomes monster. Kasparov plays knight queen c2. He wants to even consider taking at some point, and at least if not taking, this guy wouldn't be able to make castle himself. The guy played c5, Gary played e6. I'm not saying that he played all the time the best moves. You gotta have some understanding. The guy was playing in simul against how many players. But on the other hand, he just breaks on the e-file, 
and does a great job there. After knight f6 captured, now the king has to walk. Played knight e5, played bishop f4, threatening discovered check. I'm just going a little bit faster. Queen e2, once again threatens knight g6, followed by queen e8 with a nice mating uh, trick. And after bishop d7, plays bishop f5. Once again, Gary is kind of obsessed with uh, those kinds of nice tactics. The guy plays bishop c6, plays queen f3, goes queen h3, and finished off his opponent with the knight g6. A relatively nice example of how to use a powerful center that was built up after e knight c3 and e4. Lots of guys like to play g6, but you have to know just one golden rule. Do not put the knight on c3 and give your opponent a chance to play a good version uh, uh, of the Grunfeld defense. No. Push e4 first. They cannot take on c3, which means they have to put the knight um, on the edge of the board. That's a good thing. Another good and important rule, uh, since they plan to go with the bishop g7, bishop g4, uh, to give up this bishop for the knight and knight c6 eventually weakening the central pawn before you gotta play h3 and h3 stops bishop g4 and in a way makes this pawn on d4 being way stronger after bishop g7 plays knight c3 castles bishop e2 and now plays bishop e3 when they play f5 and all all of them they simply they have to go for it because any e5 you're just so much better and on f5 you just take when they take by pawn you just go with queen b3 check rook to d1 and d5 is simply gonna happen with a crushing advantage for white after any f4 you just bring the bishop here you're obsessed of pushing this pawn to d5 they play bishop f5 same approach you just go with d5 capture and here uh, i just had uh, problems should i go with i mean sweet kind of problems should i go with a longer short castle short castle is nice but you don't have a knight around the king and i believe rook f d1 and rook a c1 looks good uh, all together with a4 a5 chasing that knight away from b6 but you also have in this position a long castle with a fairly normal game and probably some g4 f4 h4 h5 and a pawn storm ideas uh finally when they play bishop f5 i've seen it uh, many times i told you already knight bd2 so when we consider all these options bishop f5 bishop g4 g6 uh, even knight f6 looks like they have to play six you just go with e4 they go knight b6 take a look at the following two games and after this you won't need anything anymore just learn the following attacking approaches so kasper played knight uh, bishop d3 in this game and after bishop e7, played castles. The guy plays bishop d7. Okay, black is a low-rated guy, obviously. He just wants to somehow complete development of his minor pieces. Knight c3, he, he does that in a very, I would say, artificial and unhappy fashion. And after rook e1, Kasper always plays the same. Knight on c3, knight on f3, bishop on d3, pawns on d4 and e4, and eventually rook on e1. I very much like uh, this form of attacking position and when they play c6 question for you what are you supposed to do so what else but e5 e5 opens up the light square bishop opens up the dark square bishop and get ready for the action of course that he would like to go either with queen e2 queen e4 eventually with the queen on g4 when he plays g6 followed by h4 and h5 or that he wants to go with bishop c2 queen d3 with pretty much the same idea although if I have to choose between those two, I always like to uh, rather put my queen on e4 because that queen can move afterwards onto the king's side and launch the attack with h4 and h5. After like f6, e takes knight e4, chasing away the bishop pair. The end of this game was very nice. He played knight e5. This reminds me of the famous game of, I don't know who played this game, Steinitz or Lusker with the queen h5, queen h7 in the Dutch defense. Bishop e5, d takes e5, and look at the end of the game. He played bishop e5, knight e6, and the queen was trapped. I like activity of his pieces. I like how he aggressively acts against his opponents. This is like very nice. And finally, uh, in case of a bishop e7, bishop d3, castles, castles, and knight e6. You gotta admit that this guy uh, playing black 
some guy Gaspar, uh, this game was playing Lisbon 1999, played a little bit better, a little bit more logical than the previous guy. And after like 96, it's your turn. What is white supposed to do? So, of course, nothing else but e5. e5 opens up both of these bishops, and in a way, a pawn that was under the attack, you cannot take any more because of a famous discovered check winning the queen. After e5, this guy played a6, so he's un very unhappy with, uh, I would say, constellation of his pieces here. Kasparov continues to develop himself. This is more like, yes, somebody would say, why a bishop f4? Uh, why not bishop e3? Because he wants to get a, a e file open for what? Maybe for queen e2, queen e4. Uh, but why bishop on f4 hitting its own pawn on e5? Because he wants to connect his rooks uh, on, on the back rank. So after like rook e8, Kasparov plays bishop e4. Interesting line. So he doesn't opt for queen e2, queen e4, because he can't, unfortunately. This guy would just take the pawn. And he goes with the bishop on e4, wants to play queen to d3, wants to eye the king's side with his bishop on e4 and the square h7, but maybe also wants to consider some bishop takes a6, what Carlsen played in one of his seminal games. After bishop d7, rook to e1, look at this. I like his patience in building up these attacks. So after g6, now he, can, he played queen e2 and rook a to d1. Look at ideal development of Kasparov pieces. I insist on this because that's why I told you this is especially good lecture for low-rated guys and medium-level guys because you just need to see the harmony of these white pieces. After rook b8, I don't know, wants to jump maybe with the knight and to defend on b7, b3. Even the limit thing, both of these knights. The guy played bishop before. Queen goes in order to defend, but also penetrates onto the dark squares on the king's side. After bishop c6, bishop g5, plays bishop f6, he's now threatening queen h6 followed by knight g5, and after like this, plays queen, h, queen g5 followed by queen h4 and knight g5. The guy played bishop e4, Kasparov includes this knight into the attack, plays queen h4, threatening some knight g5, playing bishop g5 followed by knight f6, and this guy could have called it a day. He made a terrible blunder playing king h7 and knight f6 uh, and lost the game. Uh, but just out of curiosity, if he played like this, Kasparov would give check, would win the dark square, uh, you know, like squares control, would go next with a move like uh, g4, would crush the king. King is practically without the defense or even sneaking with his queen to g5 and h6. And winning the game. Hope you enjoyed this short martial defense lecture and hopefully you're gonna have uh, lots of success with it. Thanks and see you soon.